the previous videos, we talk about the terminology related to the people. We have employer, site staff, contractor, site agent, nominated subcontractor, nominated supplier, appropriate authorities, service provider, architect, consultant, engineers, quantity surveyors, and specialist consultant. In this videos, we're going to discuss about the other terminology which can be seen in the PAN contract or typical tender document adopting the PAN contract. First, we look at the contract or the contract document. This is referring to the list of the document here, including the letter of award, articles of agreement, conditions of contract, contract drawing, contract view, and etc. The letter of award is a letter sent by an employer as a written confirmation that a tenderer has successfully and will be awarded a contract. The articles of agreement provide the information of all the parties involved in the contract. The conditions of contract determines the obligations by each party. It is normally adopted from a standard form of contract. There will be drawings and also the contract bills. The contract bill is not only the bills of quantity. It includes all these documents here, such as the instructions to the tenderer, conditions of tendering, form of tender, preliminaries, preambles and specifications, and bills of quantities. These are about the documents related to the tender and the contract. Next, we talk about the duration. In the conditions of contract, normally the duration limits are stated. For example, within 14 days after the written notice of making good defect by the contractor, or within 14 days from the date of employer possession, less than 6 weeks of applications, less than 6 months after practical completion of work, and etc. Although the days, week, and month are commonly understood, we will still need to look into details the definitions of those durations. When we talk about the numbers of days, it is related to the calendar day, but excluding the holiday at the locations of the work. That means the public holiday is not counted. Let's say now if we are talking about the durations of 7 days, this 7 days should exclude the public holiday or maybe the Sunday. And that particular holiday, it will be subjected to the locations of the work. You know that in Malaysia, there are some public holiday standardized throughout the Malaysia. There are also certain public holiday which is only applicable within certain states. So this holiday it will be counted in accordance to the locations of the work. Next we talk about the week. It is referring to seven consecutive days. This one is regardless of the public holidays. In our general perceptions, when we talk about seven days, it is equivalent to a week. In the context of the contract, or based on the definitions of the conditions of contract, this is not necessarily true because the seven day here is excluding the holidays. In the case that there are holidays within that seven day, the durations for one week is by definition is shorter than the seven days because the definitions of a week is seven consecutive days. Next, we talk about the month. It is referring to the calendar month. Depending which month it is, 
in February will be shorter, January will be longer. It will be in accordance to the calendar month. Let's say now the days of counting of the month started in 15 January. One month will end at the 14th of February. Two months will end on the 14th of March. And so on so forth. So when we talk about the month here, it is regardless the holidays. You don't have to minus the holidays. Next, we talk about the recognized mode of communications. First, it needs to be written, which is the written notice delivered by hand or by registered post. The principle here is you have the evidence of the communications, which is traceable, and you make sure that the recipients of the message has actually received it, which can be considered delivered by hand, or you have mechanism to prove that you have sent the written notice to the recipient by the registered post. Whether the recipient is replying the message, it doesn't really matter. Ignorance to the formal instruction will come with the consequences. Now the question is whether emails are being recognized. Although it is not written in the conditions of contract, in general applications, it is also considered valid. And normally this will be followed up with a written notice posted to the recipient. How about the other social media tools? such as WhatsApp, WeChat, Instagram and others. So far, it is considered a bit informal. Should the instructions be given? Again, it must be followed up with the proper written notice to be properly handed over to the recipient. This is about the written notice and how it is proved to have delivered to the recipient. In the context of the contract, all the verbal communications are not quite valid as there could be ambiguity and you have difficulty to prove its existence. And the instructions must be coming from the architect, not from the other people. There will be two modes of these communications. One is the architect instructions, we call it AI. And these architect instructions normally come in the written form, very formal, coming from the architect. With these architect instructions, the contractor will have to abide to it. Sometimes, architect give informal instructions without any written notice, and it seems that the architect is serious about the instruction. The contractor will have to follow up with the confirmations of architect instructions CAI to place a record and seek the confirmations from the architect. Simply said, the architect instructions is issued by the architect. It is a formal instruction and the confirmations of architect instructions is issued by contractor. It is when the architect gives an instructions without providing the architect instruction, the contractor will need to confirm whether it is a formal architect instruction.